Hello, my name is Dirk Ersinger for drumtrainer.com, Drum Trainer Berlin. And I want to talk in this short tutorial about very, very basic independence exercises, okay? So um, this tutorial is for drummers or beginners who never really thought about the independence on the kit. I mean, a lot of people start playing drums with friends and bands in school and they just jam and they play to records, which is totally cool. That's the way you start. Um, but maybe you come to a point where, where you, you don't get any further because you have a lack of independence. You always uh, play your right hand and your right foot together and you, you don't find uh, a way to, uh, to not doing that, okay? <laughs> so it, there are some very basic exercises. I want to start with a thing called, I call it basic independence. I learned that from my great drum teacher, the German drum pope Udo Dahm. And it, it's based on the moving accents um, we also do when we practice rudiments, like we, we shift uh, the accents through 16th notes. Uh, from starting at the one at the downbeat, we um, shift the accents always one 16th note further down the line. Okay, so I show you what I mean. I play an ostinato, a pattern in my hands, higher than eighth notes now, very easy, and a backbeat on two and four. And then I start with my kick drum on the quarter notes and I always go one um, 16th note further. One, two, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, I do it much slower and sometimes it's even easier when you play 16th notes in your um, right hand. So I, I do this, I play 16th here. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So, what you really have to make sure when you practice this, that you use a metronome. I don't have a metronome here now because I want to talk and I don't, don't always want to put it on and out again, but really use a metronome, put it on your iPhone or on your computer and try to count out loud, okay? So, and try also um, to, to make music. I know this is an exercise, but every time you sit down at the kit, really try to make music, even this exercise. And this, this uh, exercise will teach you to feel all the 16th notes in the, in the bar, which are there in, in this binary 16th um, field, okay? So I think it's a very, very uh, important um, exercise, and I, I practice it until, until today. Okay, that was the moving accents, the um, basic independence in 16th notes. We also can do this in, in a triplet way, in a ternary way, so in a 12-8 um, measure, or if you want it in, in triplets, four, four triplets, one, two, 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 two three, two, two, four, two, two. So I play an ostinato again, my hi hat, eighth notes, and a backbeat on two and four. One, two, three, four. And I do the same thing, I just shift the kick drum to the eighth notes. One, two, three, four. Okay, so same here, use a metronome, count out loud, and um, really try to make some music. So this, this will definitely help you to become 
much better player, I think, um, and uh, help you to set your inner clock better, okay? So, very important basic independence exercise. So, another um, great independence exercise is what we at Run Trainer call, we call it swing independence, um, jazz independence. So, uh, the whole technique on this, on this instrument, of course, comes from the jazz background and from the military background. So, and in, in a lot of the technique we use today, even if we don't play jazz, comes from that jazz background. So, uh, I, I think for every drummer, it's a great thing to really go back and try to get inspired by the jazz drummers and also by the technique, okay? So, wh what uh, we would do in this exercise, we play a swing in our right hand, left hand players the other way around, a hi-hat on two and four, and a kick drum very light on the quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, two, three, two, three, four, so it's tannery. So, and in the first bar of the Swing Independence, we play all the leftover eighth notes in our left hand, very soft on the snare drum. Okay, I'll show you how it goes. One, two, 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 So what you really want to do is play the notes in your left hand very soft and when you play it a little faster you want to um, control the rebound with your fingers. This is what we did in the rudimental workout uh, in another tutorial yeah, that you really want to um, control the, eighth, uh, the double strokes with your fingers. And the reason why I want you to play it soft is like in a, in a pop background, pop rock background, we always hit the snare very hard and the kick drum. And here it's the other way around. So it's, an, it's another great exercise to work on your dynamics and be able to play soft notes on your snare drum too because we need them when we play ghost notes. So this is what you train with that, okay? So this was a linear pattern. So if when the right hand played, the left hand did not play in the other way around. So the second bar in the exercise, this is polyrhythmic because on the last triplet of two and in the last triplet of four, both hands play together. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. One, two, three, four. One, two, 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 three, two, two, four, two. Notes are overlapping, so it's very slow. One, two, three, four. One, two, 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 three, two, two, four, two. One, two, three, four, one. So if you have never done this before, it's a little challenging, but nothing is a miracle, so you, you will definitely get there. Um, try it, okay? So. Third bar, we play a shuffle in our left hand. Uh, so the, the first uh, um, beat of the triplet and the last. So it's in the snare drum this. One, two, 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 And what you could try here too, as I said before, make some music. Uh, this, this, with this beat, you could make a nice swing shuffle or blues shuffle when you put a back beat on the two and the four. 
And then we have uh, a challenge that we have a ghost note and right after the ghost note we have the backbeat. One, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I do this with this whipping motion. I play the soft note while I'm going up. And I go down for the backbeat. And I discussed that in the rudimental workout. This is when we um, uh, practice the double strokes with the accents on the second beat. And so on. So it's this whipping motion, okay? And we could play a pretty nice shuffle with that. So. But, of course, in the beginning, you don't have to play it fast. And it's, it's, uh, when you start doing this, it's not about speed. It's more about um, accuracy that you, that you do it really um, in the right note values, that you are able to count out loud, and that you really work on, on your finger control, on your dynamics, and all that. Okay, And that you are able to count out loud. So just the last um, exercise real quick. We play the first and the second triplet um, in the left hand. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What you could also do, you play bar two, three, and four right after each other, okay? And it's like, like the moving accents thing, so. So, again, those exercises are very, very effective. They will make you a way better drummer. They will help you to set your inner clock. They will help you to become way better with your independence. And when you become better with your independence, you are able to play more complicated stuff. You maybe want to check out. It's nothing wrong about playing simple. Don't get me wrong. But of course, sometimes you just want to do other things. And this will definitely help you doing that, OK? So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, keep on practicing, have fun doing that, and bye-bye from Berlin City.